I love pizza. Pizza is probably my favorite food. I even like to imagine that pizza is on the menu of most taverns in my fantasy games because a fantasy world without pizza is no fantasy of mine. It's the first meal I learned how to make from scratch as an adult, and whenever I've found myself answering that age-old hypothetical question, uh, if you had to pick only one food to eat for the rest of your life, pizza. <laughs> but as much as I love pizza, and I really do, I wouldn't actually have a good time if it were the only food I ever ate. As much as I enjoy the music of my favorite band, it would be weird if I never listened to any other music. You could say the same about your favorite book, your favorite t-shirt, your favorite movie, your favorite video game. So why would I choose to only ever experience my favorite tabletop role-playing game? There's a whole industry out there, a small one, but an industry nonetheless of publishers and independent designers creating fun games that you play with a rulebook, some dice, and your imagination, and most of them are just as easy, if not easier, to learn and play than pizza. And look, this isn't a video where I just rant about D&D. D&D 5e is a great freaking game. If that weren't true, I wouldn't have just compared it to pizza, and it wouldn't have been able to catch the wave of popularity provided by Stranger Things and Critical Role and now the D&D movie. This book is nostalgic for me. It's the first RPG rule set I learned cover to cover, and I've played years of fun games using this system. I literally just started rerunning my old copy of Lost Mine of Fandelver last weekend. But by now, we all know that 5e is not the only game in town, so it's pretty preposterous to think that this one game delivers maximum fun for everyone who plays it. In fact, I see the same few massive misconceptions over and over again when people try to explain why they simply cannot even try a new tabletop RPG. And again, I'm not bashing 5e or people who love it because I'm one of those people, but it's time to face these misconceptions. And I'm going to end this video with the one and only valid reason to not even bother trying a new system, so stick around for it. Because I'm Bob, this is where we learn how to have more fun eating pizza, to, I mean, playing RPGs together, and misconception number one, for me, it's mostly a case of not wanting to do something new while in the middle of a campaign, seeing as schedules slash finding time as an adult can already be difficult enough. That second part is totally correct. Finding time to play is the hardest part of playing any RPG. It's why I've been struggling to get my own campaign of Dungeon Crawl Classics beyond level one. But the misconception is this implication that you must stop playing your 5e campaign in order to play a new system. I've seen this idea take many forms, but this other response said it clearly. Switching systems during a campaign is a hassle as well. Not everything transfers smoothly. But uh, no one said anything about switching systems. These responses are from polls I made where I asked about just trying new TTRPGs. So yes, of course, you probably shouldn't schedule a new additional campaign or try to convert your current campaign to a new system unless everybody has the time and really wants to go for it. All you have to do is say, hey, for just our next game night, I want to try running an adventure using this new game. It'll take just one session, then we'll get back to our 5e campaign. That's it. No commitment outside of your normal schedule because you're just playing it one time in place of a regular session. We all know one shots are the best way to try out a new character. Well, as a player, trying a new system is pretty much just trying a new character. This one-shot test session is why almost every system out there has a free or very, very cheap PDF of quick start rules, usually including a one-shot adventure or at least guidelines on how to set up an adventure for the system. So you don't have to switch systems or stop your campaign to try a new game. You just play it one time, and if it's fun, maybe you'll play it again, or if there's a cool mechanic everybody liked, you can add that new mechanic to your regular campaign. But the logical line of thinking leads to the next big misconception. Misconception number two. As a GM and game designer, picking up rules is not particularly challenging to me, but it still takes time. This line comes from one of the previous responses, and they make an excellent point here. Even if a system is simple, it takes some amount of time to learn. That is undeniable. However, the misconception woven into this response is that the game master must truly be a master of the game in order to run it at all. Earlier, I said 5e is the first rule set that I learned, but it's not the first system that I played or ran because in my first campaign as a player and then my first campaign as a GM, we homebrewed 
everything. Classes, spells, monsters, we made them up. Yes, we had the 5e player's handbook, but the game was just roll a d20 and roll over some number that the GM decided. This is the part where you begin to see the matrix. You can learn almost every TTRPG system out there by answering three simple questions. What's the main role? Do I want to roll high or low? What are my character stats? For D&D 5e, it's 1d20, roll high, with strength, dex, con, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. Pathfinder is 1d20, roll high, with strength, dex, con, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. Sound familiar? DCC is 1d20, roll high, with strength, agility, stamina, intelligence, personality, and luck. For Cairn, it's 1d20, roll low, with strength, dex, willpower. For Call of Cthulhu, it's D percentile roll low with strength, dex, con, intelligence, and a couple other stats. As a player or GM, that covers the majority of instances when you're engaging with the rules of the game. Some other important questions are things like, does the game have character classes? What are the basics of combat? What are the basics of spell casting? But that's all the GM needs to master before trying a new system. And once you have an okay handle on that stuff, you can explain all that to your players in a few minutes or less. Don't know the rules perfectly well to cover every situation? That's why these games have a game master, to just make reasonable decisions and keep the game moving. To learn these simple rules, this is where that free quick start PDF will come in. And fortunately, there's at least one actual play video out there now for like every TTRPG system. So you can even just sit back and watch an example of gameplay. Now, you've got your free quick start rules. You know you're only gonna run this new game as a one shot during your next regular game night and you have a grip on the basics of the game. Whatever you don't understand yet, you can fill in with knowledge from the systems you do know or make it up. But you may be facing one more farcical problem. Misconception number three. I can't convince my players to try a new game. Now, I didn't find any comments on the polls saying this directly because I didn't bother to look for any comments saying this directly. It was the second highest and highest response on each of the two polls I ran about this topic. And after what we just discussed, it should sound like the silliest misconception yet. If you recall, D&D 5e is 1d20, roll high, with strength, dex, con, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. So is Pathfinder, and Shadow Dark, and Knave 2e, and Index Card RPG, and basically Dungeon Crawl Classics. I could go on. You don't need to convince your players to play a new game, because most of the great fantasy RPGs out here are virtually the same game. So wait a minute, why bother even playing these games if they're all pretty much the same? Because even these similar games have unique, fun, innovative concepts and mechanics that you should experience at least once if you like TTRPGs. Pathfinder just loads you up with character options and strategic combat. Shadow Dark means no dark vision for anyone, so when your torch goes out, the game actually feels dangerous and exciting. Knave uses rules light magic based on carrying spellbooks, and it has no character classes because everything you carry plus your imagination, defines what your character can do. Index Card RPG streamlines everything from movement to determining DCs and uses hero points because they're awesome. Dungeon Crawl Classics has that luck stat for whenever you can't decide what other stat or skill would fit the situation. It has something akin to wild magic for every spellcaster. It bakes in the rule of cool for martial characters and it thrives on randomization with a few more kinds of weird polyhedral dice. These are some of the easiest games to slide in for a one-shot because they're already so similar to what your players love playing. And if you try just one of them, you're probably going to discover a new fun concept to add to your 5e game. So if 5e is a standard slice of cheese pizza, maybe a little pepperoni on there, these games are New York style or deep dish or Sicilian, but dang it, they're all delicious pizza. Now we're approaching that one valid excuse but if this pizza metaphor is finally paying off, please give this video a thumbs up and consider supporting what I do by picking up a set of limited edition Bob World Builder dice. <laughs> I don't know the exact amount remaining, but I know it's been fewer than 100 for at least a week or two, and you can still save 18% with code BOB. Thank you. But now, I give you the singular, sensible reason to hold off for a little while on all this other pizza and the world of other great foods out there. The good excuse we felt like we weren't really done or bored with 5e yet. There's still a lot left to explore and do. The whole drama around the OGL changes made us consider the change, 
but ultimately we decided that our problem isn't with 5e, but with Watsi. So as long as we didn't buy anything from them anymore, we still had plenty of other third-party content to explore. And that's beautiful. Guys, if Domino's Pizza had some wild scandal come out in the news, I'd consider the facts and maybe I'd stop eating Domino's forever. But I'm never ever giving up on pizza. So if you're still 100% riding the fun of D&D 5e, you don't need to worry about other games right now. I don't want it to feel like I'm pressuring you away from D&D, maybe away from WotC, but again, that's up to you, just toward some games because I think you'll have fun. That's right, I'm only pressuring you to have fun Dang it, or I'll turn this video around right now. And for just one testimonial, a couple days after I posted a video about this super easy and free RPG, YouTube recommended that I watch this video about it too, and it turns out that this guy saw my video, downloaded the game for free, played it with his friends, and they had fun, so he wanted to make his own video about it. It feels awesome to have this positive feedback loop of sharing fun games with a community. So hopefully, when you realize how eh, that one game mechanic always kind of trips you up or eh, you hear about that new critical role system, Daggerheart sounds like it's going to be pretty cool. I hope you'll be more inclined to reach past these excuses and misconceptions and harness the fun in other RPGs. I'm actually working on a follow-up video where I summarize all the new games that I've played or read so far this year, but check out this video for a breakdown of the easiest D&D-like game I've found yet. And if you appreciate these videos, please consider subscribing, maybe getting a set of those Bob World Builder dice, or joining my Patreon where I post a new pizza, 5e one-shot, every month. Thank you for your support, and keep building.